Hello and welcome to this week's coffee vlog. It's now Sunday the... I don't know what it is actually, what is it? Uh, 19th. Sunday the 19th of November. Um, so yes, 2023 is getting very close to have been done um, already. It's dark, it's wet, it's miserable, it's the UK in winter. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, we've had winds, rain, and all sorts, um, and we're heading into sort of zero or sub-zero temperatures over the next week. Um, so, on the whole, pretty grim, uh, to be fair. Um, I have again missed another week's vlog. Um, just been busy with stuff. Um, you know, work's been flat out again. Of course, we're now really in the big Christmas rush, so it's all happening. Um, loads on, loads of roasting to do, of course. Um, and that's just going to plough on now for the next three weeks or so. Uh, until we hit Christmas. Um, so yeah, all to do. Uh, on the whole, uh, busy, busy. Uh, keeping us going. Um, I don't, uh, I don't know, I don't even know, we've not done Christmas closing or anything yet actually, which I need to get my head around at some point pretty soon before it is actually Christmas, um, although it never changes, so people, regular customers should be pretty used to our closing schedule now anyway, but, um, yeah, we normally do a little leaflet to go in with orders and things, and I've not done that yet, so... Guess I'll be doing that at some point soon. Um, and yeah, it's um, it's just end of the year. Weather's pretty much average for, I suppose, November, late November. Um, heading into December. We'll wait and see if we get any snow. They keep saying it's going to snow a bit, but I don't know we'll see any or not um, in our sort of middle England area maybe maybe not um, but yeah otherwise it's just getting up in the morning it's dark go to work in the dark leave work in the dark um, and that's about it isn't it um, grey old cold miserable wet winter but there you go so one bonus of course um, of the Tesla winter wise is um, that scheduled preheating on a morning so um, have it set for seven o'clock and every morning it will heat the cabin to my desired temperature and um, precondition the battery at the same time ready for driving so that's great to just come out of a house into the cold, you know, it's five degrees, four degrees, whatever, or sub-zero. Not got to sub-zero yet, but we'll soon. Uh, but get into the car and it's the same temperature as you were in the house, because it's already heated itself up. Great. Uh, and of course, from the app, you can also turn defrost mode on. So should it be frosty or snowy or whatever else, you can melt all that off before you get to the car. Um, have a bit of super convenience from Tesla there, um, just making life a bit more comfortable. Um, I've also been playing about, I've not f figured it out quite, there's an easy entry mode with the Tesla, so um, basically then when you put it in park it, it reclines the seats back, um, moves them back so it's easier to get out, and then when you get in and put it in drive it moves them forward again. So I've just been playing around with that setting now. So apparently if I can do that, and that's my easy entry, that just moves the seat back so I can get in easier. Which is um, going to be pretty cool. It's just, I had a lot of trouble, I tried to set it up when I started out and I couldn't figure it out. Um, and I've reread like instructions on doing it and then I've just been having another go just because I'm, I'm sat in the car, <laughs> I haven't got anything else to do while it's charging. 
Um, I'm not. I'm not sitting here while it's charging just for the sake of sitting here while because it's charging because that's pointless. I never thought of doing that, but actually, I'm waiting for someone um, to take them back home again. And um, while I'm waiting, obviously, the idea was go to a charge point and get charging while I'm waiting, and then you know do the vlog and mess about with easy entry. So I'm hoping I've got all that program now. It's not. Considering how intuitive most of Tesla stuff is, that bit wasn't. It it seems like you turn it on and it creates an account which is easy entry because you have like profile accounts. And um, I had that, but it never did anything. But it seems like I had to go to the easy entry and move the seat to the position I wanted it to be for easy entry. And as you're moving it, it comes up with a little message here and realised that says save. So um, seems that was what I was missing. It, it just I'd, I'd got easy entry set at the same position that normal my account or my driving position setting is. So that's why it wasn't working. So just my own inability to, to understand the technology uh, is probably the cause there. Um, but other than that. Um, winter driving in the tesla um not really seen a huge amount of difference range isn't i can't say noticeably changing um you're obviously going to use a bit more power because of the preheating at the morning and things um i have noticed one thing is the um the regenerative braking um there's a little icon that comes up which says it's basically limited because the battery condition it's not hot enough or whatever else um, and that's on a lot more frequently now than when it was in summer um, because obviously the, the battery is too cool when you set off and whatever else so until you've done a bit of driving and it's warmed itself up um, Obviously, when you precondition it, it warms the battery up, ready for driving a bit, but not sufficient, maybe, to fully use the regenerative braking. So, so, so the downside of not having the regenerative or all the regenerative braking is um, the slowdown as you lift off the accelerator is less. It, it's less than you're used to with the, the normal, uh, and I think Tesla did overcome this. Um, because they started doing what they call blended braking. So um, when regenerative braking is reduced, as you're lifting off the accelerator and the regeneration is doing its best, but it's less than normal, that's bolstered or added up by the use of the brakes by the car automatically. You don't do anything about it, you're just doing the same thing you always do, which is lifting the, the accelerator up or down to control speed. Um, but because, of course, the, the reduced regen doesn't have an, as much braking power as full regen, uh, the car uses the brakes a bit then to mimic the effect, so you don't notice as much that you're not slowing down as quickly as you're used to as you're lifting off in certain places. So, um, but you do, I, I notice the difference in some areas that I, I travel a lot, downhill or whatever else, where normally... I wouldn't need to lift off the accelerator as much as I'm having to do um, to get it to reduce speed. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, so far it's it's all been uh, it's all been good. Um, super great on the motorways, of course. Motorway driving is just something Tesla have got really nailed down with the autopilot because realistically you're not doing anything on the motorway because it does accelerating and braking to keep up with traffic and it steers itself as well so it stays within the lane so you don't have to do any steering and you don't really have to well you don't do anything you just sit there and watch out for maybe it might do something wrong at some point um but it's pretty rock solid i've had a couple of sort of random slowdowns where it's maybe got a little bit confused um i did it once when there was a recovery truck at the side of the motorway uh and i don't know if it was being cautious about that or something uh and sometimes it doesn't like 
sort of big junctions on the motorway where there's multiple lanes going off at the sides and whatnot can get a little bit muddled with that um, so which makes you wonder how they get on with self-driving um, completely um, which of course you can't have in the UK anyway so uh, there's no point having that feature but but on the whole if you're traveling on a motorway and you've got it set on enhanced autopilot it, it does do everything you need um, and you just sit there and, and enjoy the ride um, so really pleased with that um, got some super efficient mileage on the motorway as well I think you've got to um, you've got to just be uh, kind of like staying in the 60 mile an hour range on the motorway um, to get like optimum distance for battery range um, and what I've often found and I found before in fact I did it a lot of sort of messing about not only with the RAV4 but with the um, the Renault Kadja and before the diesel Renault Kadja uh, and you could get so much mile per gallon again with those um, just by sitting on the inside lane of the motorway behind a lorry for example any sort of big vehicle truck lorry whatever um, because if you follow them they're normally doing about 60 uh, and 60 seems to be a good good sort of speed once you get up to 70 the sort of speed limit on the motorways that starts eating more mile per gallon or battery range as far as electric vehicles go um, the advantage of sitting on the inside behind a big lorry or wagon is it's clearing the air for you because one of the things that eats up battery as you're traveling um, is wind resistance uh, I mean obviously if you're going uphill then the fact that you're trying to move the car uphill is also eating power but if you're on like the flat effectively you, you'd just be rolling but wind resistance obviously is constantly pushing you back and that's eating power because because you're having to use more force to, to beat the wind resistance so sitting behind the lorry in the slipstream it breaks up the air for you you don't have the same sort of resi wind resistance and therefore you gain because because you're not having to force your way through the air and that gives you sort of super um efficient traveling so for the blackpool trips i've been doing i've done like a 44 percent was probably my worst um then a 33 percent uh but using that sort of sitting in the inside lane and following trucks got it down to 25 percent charge used um on the trip of 90 miles which if you actually do the math on that would suggest i had a 360 mile range battery um which i don't because i've only got the standard range 280 miles on the tesla um, but that's the, the point is I did that distance with such efficiency compared to what would be the average um, So you can do that you can eke out more more miles and different distance um, Obviously if you want to go everywhere super fast then do that But I've got to admit the thing is the difference between 60 and 70 doesn't get you there much quicker and realistically sitting at 60 miles an hour behind a lorry on the motorway is so relaxing and not stressful as opposed to going in the inside lane going in the outside lane always checking changing lanes changing seeing if you can pull out and you know trying to do 70 miles an hour all the time you're always changing about lanes and trying to make sure you can pull out because someone's slower in front of you but there's loads going even faster coming up the outside and can you fit in there and what and you're all you're doing all this back and forth and accelerating and decelerating because there's someone in front and it's you know it, it, it's hard makes driving hard work uh, and i've got to admit it's a lot easier and more relaxing to just sit inside lane behind a lorry and let the car do the bit and you just sat here going well this is quite nice so yeah i mean that's i'm certainly now an advocate for just very relaxed motorway driving and not going for the madness of oh, I must get there as quick as I can legally obviously 70 miles an hour uh, although 
if everyone did 70 miles an hour, it would be a lot easier to get from the middle lane to the outside lane because you wouldn't constantly be waiting for all the cars zipping past at God knows what speed that don't appear to adhere to the, the 70 mile an hour limit. Um, so, yeah, other than that, all good, really. Suppose I better do Mr. Nice's words of wisdom because I've not done them for a while and he'll be most upset. So, Mr. Nice says I've got the blip thing in the eye from the camera light now, so I can't quite read it right. I went to see the Marvels with Andrew and Alison Copley on Wednesday evening. Then I've watched Bout Schmidt starring Jack Nicholson and co starring Kathy Bates. Finally, I've watched Thomas and the Magic Railroad starring Alec Baldwin. Huh? So it's pretty good. I've been to Harold Park as I've warmed, wrapped up warm for there on Thursday afternoon. Right? The new Napoleon film. Okay. Going to Turkey with my mum and dad on the 19th and 26th of April next year. Oh, that'll be nice for you. Very good. Yeah, the new Marvels film. I'll probably just wait until it comes out um, on Disney Plus, probably. Um, which is what I'm going to be watching um, when I finish this, while I'm sat in the car. Um, I'll put Mandalorian on again. Um, do like Mandalorian in the car. Um, a bit like being in the cinema. Um, get the sound racked up as well. All the surround sound in the car is just brilliant. Um, and yeah, you can just chill out uh, and watch watch through the Mandalorian. I'm going back through the series again. So I think oh, I don't know if I'm series one, season one, still at the moment. I think I am. Um, started on that one. Um, and yeah, definitely nice and cosy, comfy and warm, sitting in the car while it's charging uh, and you're waiting to go somewhere. Um, so yeah, all good. So, I think that's about me done then. Um, let's say work flat out. Um, hive's plodding along, it all seems to be all right. Doing well on the hive engine witness. Hive witnesses are plying through nicely. Um, full node, um, it did have a bit of a blip week and a half ago. Um, it, um, well, Postgres, it seems, died. The, the back-end database where it crashed, I presume, didn't die. Um, but because everything's linked to that, it killed the um, the Hive D node completely. Um, and I couldn't get it to restart again because the Postgres gate the database in crashing had become unsynced or whatever else. It, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't right, so it wouldn't start it, so I had to wipe everything and then replay uh, the block log and put everything back into the Postgres database, let that get all up and sync, then restart syncing um, Hive Mind, which is, I thought maybe, oh, this will be it, I'll, I'll do a new sync, and this time it'll, it'll kick itself off and be normal and run as it's supposed to uh, and it hasn't still it, it still crashes just at the end when it needs to finish its last bit so um which is supposed to be getting updated um when i was talking to schmoogle about it in the hive uk meetup um there's an update to fix that particular issue but don't know when that'll be yet so but it's all running again as about as well as it could do um and until something happens, so we'll we'll see. Yeah. It's actually amazing. I'm in a Lidl car park charging. Uh, and, uh, since Lidl shut at four o'clock, which you know everything shuts about four o'clock on a Sunday. Been about eight people have driven up since four o'clock and, and walked up to the front doors and wondered why they aren't opening. And it's kind of like you know it's quarter to five. It's going to be shut, isn't it? You know, I mean, the lights are still on because obviously they're cleaning up and sorting out and whatever else. They can't just turn all the lights off inside it so the odd confused people can't drive past and go, oh, look, the lights are on, go in there. <laughs> it's everything shuts at four on a Sunday. Uh, we should have a, go back to the days when nothing opened on a Sunday and it would be no confusion then, would there? Because it's just not 
not nothing's open on a Sunday. Those were the days, uh, but never mind. Right, I'm going to get on with watching Mandalorian then. Well, actually, there's a Costa Coffee next door, and I've been here for two hours already. Um, so I might nip into the Costa Coffee to get a drink, maybe something to eat, uh, and more importantly, to use the toilet. <laughs> I'll need the loo. Um, and I'm going to have an hour and a half drive back whenever I get to set off back, whenever that may be. But um, we'll see. Okay, so have a good week. Because it's the end of the weekend now, so you can't really have much more of a good weekend. And I'll catch you in next week's coffee vlog. Okay, see ya.